Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I edit a couple of these photos of my new 2022 Subaru BRZ. Now, Lightroom has changed a lot in the last month, mostly with its new masking features and I did do a video on those new masks but I wanted to show you how I practically am going to use them and how some of these features can copy between two different photos and it's really, really cool. So. I'm excited to share this with you, and as well, I'm super thankful to Small Rig for sending me this new little microphone to test out. This is the Seymour Wave U1, and I've never really had like a microphone like this to test out before, so hopefully this is like a nice little crispy, crispy sound in your ears. But let's dive into the edits here, and hopefully as you guys follow along, you can pick up a tip or two. All right, guys, so just so you can see that I'm starting from scratch here, this photo to me is a little bit over exposed so I'm gonna come over here to one of my favorite things to use in Lightroom which is the car creative toolbox yeah I know it's a little salesy but it works really good and if you are using Lightroom in your desktop this is it's clutch check this out so your typical presets are just kind of like a one-size-fits-all and if you don't like the color that comes with that preset you're kind of pooched right like these fall presets they look great but they totally change the color of the car so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're actually going to use, we start with step one and this photo is a little bit too bright. So we're actually going to use the too bright preset and these are stackable. So all that that is controlling is the treatment over here. So the color treatment, then the next thing we're going to do is go down to our curves layer here and all this is going to control is the curves and you can pick which one you like best. Some of them just add like a nice S curve, like this is a nice S curve and some of them give you a bit more of like that flat feel. So you can see here in the curves that it actually kind of pops up the shadows a little bit. So not all of them are the same and they give you a different look. Now this is where it gets awesome is that you can kind of pick which color style you want to put on your photo because not every photo is a one size fits all now for me I really like to use the classic because it's my personal classic colors I tend to desaturate the yellows that tend to land on the road and desaturate the aquas that almost always land in the windshield and additionally a lot of my Instagram colors do come from this color grading panel so in my shadows I often will add 220 and 10 into the saturation and hue 35 and 10 into the highlights and then from the balance here I get to decide if I want to bring it to the colder side or up to the warmer side so for this one we're going to go up to the warmer side we're going to make sure that that blending is up and then I'm going to come up here to the midtones and actually pop the luminance a bit because you can see it'll just help a little bit with our car popping out. So you can see we're down to the sharpening panel. Now if you want, you can drag this around or you can just come over here and pick your favorite sharpening mask. So I have a couple here. A little grit is gonna be a lot of clarity. Make it stand out, it's gonna be even more gritty. Sharpening is gonna be kind of a standard sharpen with adding a little bit of masking. And then soften is actually gonna remove clarity and then kind of keep your sharpening around the same. And I tend to like that one, but for now we're just gonna do the sharpening one. Now this is where it gets really fun is in the filters. What I wanna share with you is how masking can absolutely change this photo. I mean, this is the before and after with just a general kind of preset look. But what we're gonna do is now Lightroom has given us the option with masking to really pull out the subject, pull out the sky. We can remove parts of the background as well, which is so cool. And we're gonna use some filters to draw our attention to the car. Now, a lot of this is similar to the editing that I've done in the past, but it's kind of amped up now. Like my editing has just boom, next level because Lightroom has given us that option and I wanna share that with you. So the first thing that I'm gonna start with is kind of a typical uh, linear gradient that we're gonna grab from the bottom. Now, one thing that Lightroom has given us the option to do here is actually to remove the subject. So I'm gonna do a standard, kind of drop the exposure here. What this is doing is we're trying to draw the attention to the car, but I wanna come up here to my mask and I wanna subtract and I wanna hit select subject. What this is doing is it's going to select our car here. If I hit O, you can see what it's doing. And it's caught our car pretty good, but I'm gonna subtract a little bit more with the brush and just make sure that none of our car is being affected here. There we go, hit O again, and we can just drop that as much or as little as we want. Now that fade is playing a part. If you come down to the curves, you can see that we're not really able to go any farther in our blacks. 
than what it is telling us not to crush there. So if we wanted to, we could come down a little farther here and that'll give us a bit more latitude down in the blacks to make our mask kind of go a little darker like that. But for now, I think that looks okay. Now the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new mask and we're gonna hit select subject. Now hopefully this will just select our car and there you go, it did a pretty good job of that. Now this is kind of like a standard mask that I would use for my car. I'm gonna pop the exposure just a little bit. You wanna be careful not to do it too much because it looks very unrealistic and we wanna avoid that. So we're actually just gonna pop this up a little bit. Now when I tend to add exposure, I always tend to add contrast to help it sit more naturally. Now what I've been enjoying doing is popping the shadows up to get more of the details in the grill and these kind of like deep detail areas. And then depending on your car, we can take away the highlights again to make it kind of feel like it's sitting naturally in the photo. Add a touch of contrast with the whites and then our blacks bring those back down to a nice kind of contrasty point. Because then again, if you click up here, you can see it's a very subtle change, but it just kind of makes it pop a little bit more. And I really dig that. Okay, so here's our before and after so far. Here's a before and after with our masks so far. Now what we're gonna do here is we're also going to mask out our sky. So we're gonna hit select sky and we can just kind of play around with this and just see what looks best. We can bring back the exposure, maybe warm it up, cool it down. I'm not actually gonna to do too much to it. I think it looks like it's pretty well exposed. So I think we're gonna keep it kind of where it's at. One really cool trick I've learned here with the new kind of select sky, select subject buttons is if you take another linear gradient and we drag it from the top, what we can do is we can subtract the sky. I'm just gonna do that, which is great. And we can subtract the subject. So what this is hopefully gonna do is we're actually gonna be able to darken just this area here that is selected and we can just draw more attention to the car because our eyes are drawn to light essentially and what we want to do is just kind of keep our eye drawn to what is essentially our subject here so if we want we can kind of make that a little bit more vibrant because it's feeling a little bit dull back there anyways if you want to you can change the colors of just that section i'm just going to try and detract attention from back there and keep our eye focused on the car here one last thing I think I'll do is we're going to create what I like to call directional light. So as you can see, the shadow here on the car is means the sun's coming from kind of up here. So I'm going to create that mask and we're going to draw kind of in the same direction as the sun and we're going to add light. So we're just going to add exposure here and make it look like we're adding just like another dimension to the photo, a bit more depth to the photo and we're gonna add a bit of contrast. So there you go, there's some pretty cool ways of masking um, your subject, masking out the background and drawing a lot of attention to the car. And the last thing that we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make sure that the crop is perfect, nice and linear. And then if I'm gonna post this to Instagram, just make sure that the car is nicely centered as well. So we're just gonna do that. Now the healing tool in Lightroom, in my opinion, is not that great. I tend to do healing in Photoshop. See, as you can see there, it didn't really do a great job of picking what to mask out. So I tend to do this job in Photoshop if I was going to do any healing because I think it just looks terrible. Okay, so this is what's really cool now about the new masking feature. So I've got another photo plan. So we're gonna hit Command C. We're gonna copy everything over except for exposure and I'm gonna select all the masks here. We're gonna copy this. We're gonna go over to the photo that I wanna show you here and we're gonna hit paste. Now, it hasn't technically copied over all those masks yet. So what we need to do is first we're going to adjust the crop because I hate it when the crop doesn't look straight. That's one of the most important things in your photos. Make sure that the horizon line looks good. And then I don't know if you've ever known this, but if you click on the exposure, you can see here it says you can now modify with your plus or minus keys. So you can actually pick what one you want to do that. If you click on one of these things, now all you have to do is hit plus or minus and it'll control just that thing. So we're gonna hit exposure because I generally, when I show up at a photo, just need to correct the exposure. So now what we're gonna do is actually, we're just gonna come up to our masks here and we're just gonna start going through these. And where it says subject, we're gonna click on those and we're just gonna hit update now what this is going to do is it's going to pick that subject and if we hit oh well it 
oh, I have some brushes here that I, we kind of masked that out. So we're going to delete those brushes. So then we're going to go to our second mask, and this is just a subject mask. So let's see how well it does here. Did a pretty darn good job, and it's really popping now. So eventually we'll get to doing some desaturation. This one here, let's see what this is doing with the background. Oh, that's the sky, and that looks way <laughs> too much. That is just not, that's not cool. I don't like that. I wonder if we delete that, what it's going to do. Oh yeah, that's that's nasty. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna solve some of these problems with our blues. Now I do know down here we've got some calibration on and that makes the blues look pretty strong. For some reason the blue primary, if you just add saturation, makes all of the colors pop. It looks so good. But we're gonna dial that back a little bit because we've got a very blue car. Then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna dial back the blues as well just because it's a bit more of a monotone kind of photo. Dial back some of the vibrance. We're gonna make sure that our reds are still popping in. Let's come up here and we're gonna go select sky. We're gonna update that. We're gonna update our subject as well. And now you can see that that's selected a whole new thing, which is awesome. We're gonna see what we can do to dial that back, keep our attention on the car itself. That looks pretty cool. Now for here, it's kind of the same way the light's coming in, but it's not as natural in this photo to have that. So, okay, so this isn't looking bad, but I think what I need to see is a bit more attention drawn to the car. So we're gonna bring this back a little bit more. That looks a little bit better. And maybe we'll create a new linear gradient and bring it down from the sky and just reduce exposure. Again, just bringing our attention to the sky. I think that's too much color. So I'm again, just gonna kind of draw that out. Now, one thing I've noticed a little bit in the R5 is that the purples really are enunciated, and especially with this kind of World Rally blue color, there does tend to be a bit of purple, and it's captured pretty strongly in the camera. So if you want, you can see it here. We can actually just drag this a little bit more to the left to keep the color of the car just nice and blue, and then we can desaturate that depending on our photo. I think I'm actually going to come back up to the mask here, we're going to add a little bit more exposure on the car and then keep our contrast high to make sure that it sits really naturally. And look at what this is doing. This is so brilliant. Like the details and the shadows and the rear diffuser of the vehicle, it just like really helps that pop a lot. Now in my new preset pack that I'm building, I'm hoping that I can actually create these car mask filters that all you guys have to do is put the filter on and then just select the subject again. And hopefully you guys will have kind of my formula for helping that car pop out. Um, but I'm still working on those and kind of refining them and make, making them perfect. So I won't send those out yet, but you can look forward to them hopefully in the new year. But one of the presets that I am working on is called classic blue. And this is kind of what it's looking like when we get to that vibe and I'm super digging it. Um, as you can see, we're changing some of the purple colors there, but I mean, it's, it's looking really good on my BRZ. So there you have it guys. Those are some of the major new tools and updates that we have in Lightroom that are making the photos really pop. And I think it's essential to use that subject masking tool and be really careful not to make it stand out too much, but definitely use that and add that contrast to make sure it sits naturally back in the photo. But I'm super stoked on the new Lightroom updates and I'm hoping that these will give you some tips that you guys can use moving forward. What's really cool as well is that these are all on Lightroom mobile. So iPad or your phone or whatever, all of these same tools, select subjects, select sky and subtract all of those things are in Lightroom Mobile, which is incredible. Lots to learn. I think this is really, really cool for automotive photographers to be able to use. I mean, you can use it in any photo you want really, but it really excites me in my profession, what I'm doing. So I hope that you guys have found this useful. And if you liked how it sounded, let me know because I'll drop a link to this mic down below. Now, of course, these presets are going to be down below and they are on sale. You can get the V1 pack, which is kind of your best deal if you want to get pre-packaged presets. But again, this Lightroom toolkit is kind of like a build your own preset with those stackable kind of layers. And I think that's the best bang for your buck. If you guys did find this video helpful, make sure to smash that like button for me. If you're into automotive photography or the Subaru BRZ, we are going to be building this car out. I'm so excited to have this car to shoot, uh, use different tools and show you guys how to use them to up your game and to make your photography better. So yeah, it's really exciting. Make sure to subscribe if you're into that kind of stuff. But um, really, I really love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. We're over 40,000 and it's just kind of, it's feeling pretty surreal. I mean, I wouldn't have this car 
without you guys. So thank you so much. And I, you know what I'm thinking? Let me know in the comments below. I'm actually thinking of making a video of like how much I make through YouTube and, and through presets to actually allow me to get this car. So if you guys are interested in that, um, this is kind of how I've made my career in car photography work. So uh, yeah, let me know if you're interested in the comments below. But otherwise, thanks guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.